So Secretary Wong, do you think we're ready at the pace at which uh, farmers are benefiting from agripreneurship, but they're already on the mentor me level, but at what point will the government say farmers as well as trade and services are ready to compete in the region? Uh, thanks, Kathy. Good morning to all. Um, it's a continuing, uh, it's a work in progress. So definitely we have to make uh, the farmers think like entrepreneurs and you know, act like entrepreneurs. In that way, you compel them to become you know, uh, more innovative with the products. In other words, you don't just sell the commodity, but value add, further process the product, because it is in value adding where you get much of the income. The yeah, income is generated on creativity, the, you know, the, the value adding, the innovation that you put into a particular commodity. In fact, that's not limited to, to agriculture products. When we talk of SMEs, and that's the reason why uh, former president uh, Royal mentioned uh, the inclusion of micro. In the micro SME, uh, we say in the, in the Philippines it's, that's 99.6 percent. Actually, 91 percent of that is the micro. It's only eight plus percent for uh, SM for the SM no, SMEs, and then uh, th th therefore it's critically important for us to empower the micro mostly. No, and that is where you can really achieve prosperity for all if you make the micro really level up and, and be smarter entrepreneurs. That when we talk of micro, you're usually talking of traders, retailers, sari sari store, you know, uh, mom and pop store style. But what we want to make when we started uh, the Go Negocio, and thanks to the president for really coming up with the idea of creating an advocacy on entrepreneurship development, is really make smarter entrepreneurs in the country, not just entrepreneurs. In other words, it's not creating livelihood programs, but really creating more entrepreneurs. Because when you say entrepreneurs, these are the more uh, dynamic, innovative set of businessmen. They look, they look, they find ways. They look for, you know, uh, they're very resourceful, uh, and 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 they always innovate. They look for what's out there in the what's being demanded, what's the unmet uh, needs in the market, and they fill it up, and therefore the product becomes more relevant. And if you have entrepreneurs always thinking of what's the next big thing that I can do, then you really would have a, a, a much empowered micro and small and medium entrepreneurs. And this is where, I guess, in government, the, the bill and the act of uh, the Goni Gosha Act, uh, initiated by Senator Ban, really made a, a big difference because uh, we are able now to establish. By right now, we have about 478 negotiation centers. And uh, the negotiation centers, as explained by Senator Bam, really provides, at the end of the day, three important aspects. It's not just financing, access to money, access to market, which I can explain in a bit, uh, in a while, and of course, access to mentoring. And uh, in, in, in DTI, uh, just quickly, we, we came up with uh, the seven M's of intervention. And that has something to do really with changing mindset, Change uh, mastery of entrepreneurship concept, making you know, uh, uh, making uh, entrepreneurs realize that there is really a science also behind you know creating a business, unique selling proposition, uh, product development, uh, looking for what's needed in the market, opportunity seeking, etc. Financial literacy, the mastery of the different entrepreneurship concept, which many micro entrepreneurs may not have learned because probably they've not gone through business schools, of course, not all, maybe just one percent. So we really have, through informal education, entrepreneurship education, we're able to bring that across the country. And then, of course, uh, mentoring, which is empower, a powerful tool uh, in, in any entrepreneurship uh, journey, mentoring really plays an important part, and that is where you have this Big brother, small brother, helping each other in the Go Negosho Kapatid program with PCCI, Go Negosho, and, and many organizations, PFA, and then AFI, different franchising groups, and the Federation of Filipino Chinese. There, there's a lot of uh, a private sector initiative right now because of this uh, ecosystem that we're building. Now, access to market is uh, important, as mentioned, and, and we're trying to just continuously innovating uh, beyond, let's say, the usual trade fair that we have. Uh, which really gives exposure to a lot of products, but beyond that, we move a little further by making the products available in not only in trade fairs where you have two to three days exposure, but really encouraging and, and you know partnering again with the private sector 
we have here the, the SM Group, the, the Robinsons, the City Mall, uh, the Villard uh, Malls, that is now providing a, a free space. Imagine, a free space in a mainstream market that will enable micro-entrepreneurs, the best of their products, the best of MSME products, get that exposure, waiting to be discovered for any volume buyer, whether it's a local or even retailer, local and both foreign, foreign and local, uh, uh, and allowing them to, to be discovered. And, and uh, you know, when they get discovered, that's where you get the volume buys and they become bigger and they graduate. And we offer the space to the next best batch of, uh, you know, micro SME uh, products. So that's, that will be a continuing process that will really provide market access. The, the, the financing, a lot has been done there and we've initiated some more microfinance program under the Duterte administration, putting in and setting aside a budget that will uh, give them a lower cost uh, financing to replace the 5-6, the usurious uh, source of, the typical source of, of financing for the micro uh, entrepreneurs. So, a lot of programs that will provide market access, uh, finance, and most importantly, the mentoring, which will really level up the kind of thinking, the innovative uh, uh, mindset that all entrepreneurs would have. And with that, we prepare them, therefore, to become stronger entrepreneurs, ready to set and set foot in global shores. And we link them now uh, with, with uh, first with even local bigger companies, and as well as in the, in the global scene, as we talk about global value chain linking, that these uh, micro SMEs being part of the value chain of bigger companies here and abroad. And the digital, digital economy, technology is always a part of empowering them because not only for e-commerce purposes, the, the more important thing for me in the digital economy access really is the idea generation, the source of ideas, uh, how do you improve further your business model, new ideas on design, on packaging, what's a trend out there, what's being mar what's marketable nowadays, and these are sourced from, from, the I mean, from the internet. You don't have to travel before you have to travel to get many ideas. A lot of entrepreneurs would go to Hong Kong, Singapore, Hong Kong. why are you going there? No, you want to get more ideas. So that's how you know, they, they continuously innovate their business. Nowadays, of course, the internet is there. So, Empowering the MSMEs to really prepare them for uh, and, and improve their global competitiveness is key.